Ascites is a pathological accumulation of fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Healthy men have no or little interperitoneal fluid, whereas women have up to 20 milliliters depending on the phase of their menstrual cycle. Ascites results because of an increased port of venous pressure, reduced plasma proteins known as hypoproteinemia, chronic peritoneal irritation, leakage of lymphatic fluid into the peritoneum, or a fluid overload. Let's have a look at the pathophysiology of ascites. To understand the pathophysiology of ascites, we should do it as per the cause because each cause has a different mechanism as which it causes ascites. This can be summarized by this flow sheet. Increased pressure in the part of veins, production of nitric oxide causing dilation of the abdominal vessels, and this dilation causes an increase in blood flow to the abdominal vessels, reduced blood flow to major organs, activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, and sodium and water retention again back to the increased pressure in the bottle system. One of the major causes is liver cirrhosis as it causes an increase in port of venous pressure. The presence of portal hypertension contributes to the development of ascites in patients who have liver cirrhosis. Apart from cirrhosis, any cause of increased resistance to hepatic or port of venous flow can lead to ascites. There is an increase in intrahepatic resistance causing increased port of pressure. This increased pressure within the hepatic veins or post sinusoidal level increases hydrostatic pressure within the hepatic sinusoids and the port of veins. In late stages of liver cirrhosis, there is a collateral vein formation shunting of blood to the systemic circulation and also a vasodilation of the splanchnic arterial system. This in turn results in an increase in port of venous flow. All these abnormalities result in an increased production of the splanchnic lymph and lymphatic flow is increased proximal to the point of vascular obstruction and when the normal capacity of the lymphatic system is overwhelmed, the transudate fluid moves across the surface of the liver, mesentery, and intestines into the peritoneal cavity. Vasodilating factors, for example, nitric oxide, is responsible for the vasodilator effect in this case. And there is hemodynamic changes resulting in sodium retention by activation of the system renin angiotensin aldosterone with the development of hyperaldosteronism. This renal effects of increased aldosterone causes a sodium retention and also contribute to the development of ascites. Sodium retention is the consequence of hemostatic response caused by underfilling of the arterial circulation secondary to arterial vasodilation in the splanchnic vascular bay. Because the retained fluid is constantly leaking out of the intravascular compartment into the peritoneal cavity, the sensation of vascular filling is not achieved and the process continues. This increased port of venous pressure in combination with this planktonic vasodilation alters the normal permeability and capillary pressure. This alteration enables movement of vascular fluid through the poles between the capillary vascular endothelial cells in the portal system into the extravascular space of the liver and the intestines. Any condition which causes obstruction to the hepatic venous flow may lead to ascites as a result of an increased port of venous pressure, for example, a case called bad shear syndrome. The site of obstruction can be anywhere from the hepatic venules, large veins, 
in video vena cava or right atrium of the heart and this is why the right heart failure causes ascites. Hypoalbuminemia is another cause of ascites. Low concentration of plasma proteins, mainly albumin, and reduced plasma aquatic pressure also contribute to the loss of fluid from the vascular compartment into the peritoneal cavity. Hypoalbuminemia is due to a decreased synthetic function of a cirrhotic liver. In a normal person, there is a relatively high osmotic pressure in the intravascular plasma which pulls back the leaked fluid into the vascular system. This osmotic gradient is reduced in hypoalbuminemia, hypoproteinemia or low protein levels in blood so that less fluid is removed from the extravascular space into the intravascular space. In decreased synthetic function of the liver, the capacity of intestinal and hepatic lymphatics to remove fluid from extravascular interstitial space is exceeded and ascites eventually develops. Another cause of ascites is carcinomatosis peritonei or malignant infiltration. Abdominal cancers cause ascites as a result of inflammation, exudation, shedding of cells and in some instances bleeding. This case usually occurs in late stages of cancer and the most common cancers associated are gastric cancers and ovarian cancers because of their ease of transperitoneal spread. Peritoneal inflammation also can lead to ascites. Like any form of inflammation, peritoneal inflammation results in an increase in flow within the peritoneal blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels. Peritoneal wall microvascular permeability increases with consequent exudation of plasma proteins and fluid into the extravascular phases. When the ability of the lymphatics to absorb the fluid is exceeded, it accumulates within the peritoneal cavity. And due to high protein in this fluid, reabsorption of the fluid is also impaired. This worsens ascites. Another cause of ascites is a leakage of fluid into the peritoneum. This leakage occurs when an intraabdominal lymphatic is transected, like in the cases of abdominal surgery or trauma. Ascites develops when the rate of leakage exceeds the rate of absorption by the remaining peritoneal lymphatics.